All right, Shalom. I go by the name of Robin Moff with the Nebraska camp. This is GMS Any Quick and Spirit. First off, I want to give all praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, double honest to our apostles slash elders, which are GMS, and blessings and salutations to you brothers and you few, few women out there that's uh, enduring this truth and sincerity. Uh, with that being said, uh, we want to get into this lesson, um, this article I have from the freethoughtproject.com. Um, it says the title of the uh, article is "Weapons Make Weapon Make Weapons Makers Caught on Tape Celebrating the Financial Benefits of ISIS and Syrian War." Right? Um, see, uh, can't find where the, the article was when it was made. Salakia, I didn't uh, look for that, but let's get into it. Have some different uh, can of worms. It says Palm Beach, California. Okay, um, in West Palm Beach, this uh, this week, representatives from major defense contractors spoke to their investors um, about how well business was going in in these times of global war. Representatives from top firms like Ray, Raytheon, Oshkosh, and uh, Lockheed Martin were in attendance in somewhat of a celebration of the escalating conflict in the Middle East and Africa, okay? Um, and as you can see, the main thing I wanted to point out uh, after I, do, I did a little bit of research on it, uh, I'm going to go with Oshkosh first. I looked them up. I didn't look up all of them, all of them but I looked up a few of them. Um, as you see here, um, the Syrian war began... Um, um, March, I believe March 15th of 2011. Okay. This is the stock of Oshkosh. As you see, if it started in March, 2011, here it is in 2012 and it, and it just peaks. Okay. And it just, it just increased all the way up to 2014 and then it starts to lower in 2016. Okay. Um, and that's this stock. It's a high, it's a lucrative business. Okay, a very lucrative business, and it's going to show how lucrative it is. Okay, as you see, Oshkosh uh, price, you know, the change, and things like that. And there's a, a tons of information on here that I, I, you know, I'm not going to go through, but you know, you can see for yourself. And then the other investors was what Raytheon, right? Raytheon, you can see that these are a, a, a privately owned defense companies. These are not government. These are privately owned companies, okay? And uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is what I wanted to look at right here. Uh, Raytheon common stock. You know, the price is tell you the price. Change percentage of volume, but, you know, of course I skipped over the exchange for the key purpose is that it's exchanged in what? The U.S. dollar, okay? Just same as the oil. And that's why America benefits. The point is, America benefits off these wars, man. Okay? War is a very lucrative business. Okay? So, let's let's go into um, another paragraph. Uh, really, the last, this one right here. There's another paragraph I'm going to go into after this. Um, let's see here. I, I just go into the last one, um, the last two. It says, it's all turmoil they, they have going on, whether turmoil occurring in Yemen, whether it's with the uh, Houthis, whether it's occurring in Syria or Iraq with ISIS, Kennedy uh, Kennedy added. This is the president of one of the, um, I believe he's the president of uh, Raytheon, okay? It says, in addition, the growing wars, the contractors also celebrated the fact that the, that the def defense sector was recently granted a six hundred and seven billion budget by the government. Okay, that's a lot of fucking money, man. Okay, and that's a lot of money flowing through in U.S. dollars. Okay, so uh, reading on it says um, our programs are well supported in the budget. We think we did fairly well. Tanner concluded. And, and um, they show you uh, a recent report by journalist Glenn Greenwood pointed out stock prices for weapons manufacturers sharply increased just after the terrorist attack at, in Paris last month. Okay. 
And that, that when I read that, that led me to look up, well, uh, when did the series, the, the Syrian war started, okay? And this shows that, it shows what time it started and what, um, how to stock, and you can, and I showed you also on Oshkosh, how to stock rose, March, March, 15, March 15, 2011. And you see as a Syrian war, it was a four year, it's a four year war and, um, and ongoing. Okay. 2011, you can really say 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015. Okay. And once it hit here, it rises up. Okay. All the way up to here. Okay, it basically uh, peaked out right here, but it uh, maintained a decent, decent rate about here, and it's still up. Okay, why is that? It's because it's a, um, they're making money, man. Okay, war is all about profit. So, um, I'm moving on because I want there's a lot of information I'm going to be bringing out also with the scriptures. Okay, matter of fact, um, we're going to bring out a scripture just to. Segue real quick. Uh, Psalms 55 and 20. Okay. It says, He hath put forth his hand against such as be at peace with thee, with, at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. The words of his, of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Okay. Because at the end of the day, Esau, it has his blessing is the sword, man. So all you niggas, you you two third Uncle Tom niggas, it's all gun hole going out there, going to war, uh, joining the army, and supporting the government and all this other shit. They they got a lot of blood on their hands. America just is is Babylon, of course, and it's it's a uh, it's basically um a pit for your uh, demise if you um choose to believe in this system. Okay, uh, as well as any other Edomite estab establishment, okay, which a lot of you niggas do, man. You, a lot of you niggas are pro-war. A lot of you niggas complain about how the military is not getting paid enough, and, and, and people complain about being on food stamps. These people are over there suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, from killing innocent people and all kind of shit. That's why they come back all fucked up, man, okay? Because at the end of the day, those those... Your, your nephews and your sons and your cousins, they're all going out there fucking up innocent people, and they know it, okay? But they're not obligated to say anything about it, okay? Or they don't want to say anything about it. And you niggas out there supporting that, man, okay? But that's what it says. It shall be wars and rumors of wars, okay? But it's it's heightening now. They've been doing this for years, but it, it's heightening. As you said, it's, it's in Africa, it's in Syria. Um, you got Afghanistan, uh, starting to beef, you know, all all these countries, especially in the Middle East, which is a, um, a valley of Yahweh Shepot, man, okay, or Jehoshaphat, okay, that's that's in that area around the Persian Gulf, the, um, I believe the uh, the Black Sea, if I, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, brothers, and uh, Salak if if I got that incorrect, okay, so I want to play this audio tape here. Just listen to this real quick. So it's going to play. Switching to uh, the budget. Yeah. Okay, the overall budget, we we're getting closer potentially to a two year budget deal. Uh, I'd like to just ask you your thoughts on that, um, how that aligns with Lockheed, how the strategic priorities that we're seeing out there uh, that are likely to be in this budget. Plus, maybe we can throw in some of the recent, um, you know, perhaps. Uh, uh, increase in activity in the war, uh, the global war against terrorism, yeah. and how that might leverage Lockheed's portfolio. Yeah, so budget-wise, I, like, I probably sound like the, just another voice of the chorus of everyone who's come yeah. before me here. I mean, our programs are, are well supported and so forth. I, I'd encourage you to do your own analysis, take a look. You know what our programs are. Go, go see what is in the budget. Uh, we think we did fare uh, very well, but like I said, I'm probably saying the exact same thing you heard every other person on the stage mm -hmm. tell you beforehand. Um, we do think that's the case, and again, you can you can kind of go verify that yourself. Um, it's it's great to have that deal done, uh, or at least that we think done, um, and to at least have greater certainty. I think that benefits ourselves. That benefits our ability to put you know things under contract with our supply chain. It, it does a lot of goodness in terms of creating stabilization of the business that we like. Yeah, uh, so stable goodness from that perspective. Yeah, they want to create stabilization in the business that they like. You know, uh, Salakia, see here, 
They want to create stabilization in a business that they like. How do you create stabilization? You create conflict, okay? The Paris attacks, um, they show it in the Paris attacks, the stock rose up, okay? And once again, all this money is just like the oil is, is filtered in U.S. dollars, man, okay? Um, some of the activity that you're seeing, you know, our, we're, we're, we're getting sort of in, maybe intangible is not the right word, indirect benefits that may not be readily transparent. But for instance, you know, in theater right now, you, you know, you've got to kind of knit these pieces together, right? But you look at what's going on with Syria and with Russia now having flying activities in Syria, uh, the, the shoot down of the Russian aircraft by the Turkish Air Force. Um, being therefore bringing back into Syria, you know, surface-to-air missile capabilities from the Russians, that makes Syria an incredibly dangerous place to fly. Uh, and and who is flying a lot of those missions in Syria? The U.S. military. Uh, the U.S. military doesn't like to, to have not have uh, to have pilots in harm's way without the ability to bring those pilots home safely. What that says is we're using the F-22s. Uh, a lot more in Syria than probably people expected. What does that mean to Lockheed Martin? We're now supporting the F-22s mm -hmm. with a lot more sustainment activity than we had expected. So there's sort of an intangible lift because of the dynamics of that environment and our products in theater that we hadn't necessarily expected to see because of just the escalation of what's going on there. And this is sort of in my simple thinking, you know, sort of proving proving the argument of the fifth generation aircraft mm -hmm. in the battle space. Uh, because so basically, I'm not going to, you know, listen to the whole thing. We're not going to go over the whole thing. You can catch it yourself so you see the site. Um, the fact that they're making money off, um, off of these events, man. Big money, okay? And the U.S. is always involved, of course, okay? So we're going to go into um, the scripture... Um, to close it out, okay, it's uh, Sirach chapter uh, 17, I believe, 17, make sure, uh, 7, yeah, uh, see here, oh, chapter 12, Salakia, chapter 12, verse 10, okay, it says, never trust thine enemy, okay, we, yes, the scripture says, I have, uh, Yahweh Shai said, I've told you to love thy enemy, we, the enemy and that situation is talking about your brother. That's talking about your, your neighboring tribes, okay? But in this case, never trust thy enemy. This is applied to Esau. It's for, it says, for like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness, okay? Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him, and thou shalt be unto him as, uh, as, thou, as if thou hast wiped the looking glass, and thou shalt... And thou shalt know that his rust have not altogether wiped away. So they basically is saying don't trust your enemy because you think it's all good, but it's that, that corruption is still there. So all these years that these, these countries been dealing with America, now oh they'll say, Oh, we help we come to help. Okay? And these countries are are, are inviting them in, accepting their help, they're hiring these companies. They're using these uh, private businesses, okay, which eventually uh, end, end up in their demise, okay? And that's why it says uh, Babylon have been a cup in their hand. But this is now it's, it's really going higher than them. Babylon is just, America is just the, uh, the forefront, the head, the head um, country to, to run, the, to run the, uh, the beast, which is the, the UN and things like that, okay, with the rich elite bankers. You know who that's basically who's running these private companies and all these other things okay uh such as the prisons and the uh military industry okay so it says uh verse 12 it says set him not by thee least when he have overthrown thee he stand up in thy place neither let him sit at thy right hand least he seek to take thy seat and, and basically, that's what happens when when these company when these countries uh, get involved with America. They knock that they knock the government down and they put up a puppet. Okay, and thou at, at the last remember my words and be pricked therewith. Who will re, who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent, or any such as come nigh um come nigh wild beast? So basically, 
you get involved with America is your fucking fault. You know what I'm saying? Because you know they're they're a piece of shit. But all these countries are uh, they're heathens anyway, man. Okay. And as far as our people, you know, you're not supposed to trust the so-called white man. Period, man. Okay, the motherfucker's no good head to toe. Okay, from from then all the way up into now and into the future. Okay, the scripture said that he gonna he's prophetically he's gonna fight against or attempt to fight against Yahweh Shai, man, the Most High and the angels. Okay, when y'all hear about Satan battling against the angels, they ain't talking about spirits against spirits. No, I talking about so-called white man against the elect and the, uh, Yahweh Shai and his angels, man. Okay. Which, as far as that story in, in, in um, Isaiah, they they uh, the the masses and fuck that story all up. But if you want to go with that notion that Satan is fighting against the angels, then the angels are the elect of the men of the Lord. It's really Israel and um, the uh, Yahweh Shai when he come with his chariots, uh, alluding to uh, Second Ezra, uh, I believe the um, either fourteenth or thirteenth chapter, man. Okay. I believe it's the 14th chapter where it says uh, that he graved himself a great mountain. Okay. But uh, moving on. So it says, verse 14 says, So one that goeth to a sinner and is defiled with him in his sins, who will pity? Okay. So basically that's why the scriptures say you go down, to, go down to Egypt for power. Our people go down to Egypt for power and these other countries are doing so also, man. And it's always going to end up in calamity. Okay, it says, verse 15 says, For a while he will abide with thee, but if thou begin to fall, he will not tarry. Okay, an enemy speak, this is the point I wanted to get, an enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but in his heart he imagineth how to um, throw thee into a pit. Okay, and that's, okay, a pit is a trap. It's basically, it's setting you up, man, from Paris to Saudi Arabia to, uh, um, not sorry, Arabia, Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq, Turkey, all these places, uh, and the, an enemy uh, speaking sweetly with his lips. Or uh, we don't like what's going on, um, Ukraine and, and, and um, with uh, America and Ukraine, and um, how they upset or uh, so-called upset about Crimea and all this shit. Hell, they're going through hell in Venezuela. You don't see America going gun hold and sending out health uh, uh, care packages. To uh, assist the uh, the people in Venezuela, okay, those damn Hamites over there, they they're not even worried about them, man, okay. Why? Because it's it's nothing it's nothing there for them besides besides war, of course, you know, and, and them buying the revenue. But they as far as that that revenue they want, they want that Middle East right now, okay. They they really got Africa under under uh under control, okay. It says the enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, that. Warm, warm peace, you know what I'm saying, or, or warm terror to get peace, but in his heart he imag he imagineth how to overthrow thee into a pit. He will wipe, he will weep with his eyes. Okay, but if he be, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. Okay, and all the little kids and this and that and these side ass stories about how, you know, we need to take care of them and, and watch over them. But at the end of the day, you're, you're, you're dropping bombs on them every fucking twice a month, man. Okay, statistically. Okay? Uh, moving on, it says, If adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him. And that's the main point. If adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. Crimea, man. Okay? they It was it's, it was annexed, meaning they voted for it. And America got a problem. They ain't none of your fucking business, man. With, with Gaddafi... In Egypt, um, with the Syrians, uh, all this, they, they get involved. And just like Russia, Russia is, that's why Russia is going to get to a point they're not going to want silver or gold and want no type of ransom to uh, uh, to alleviate the they, uh, their anger, man. Because at the end of the day, y'all is in somebody's fucking business, man. Fucking with people's shit, you know. And these countries, are they, they drunk the wine, therefore they are mad, man. Okay. It says, an enemy speaketh, um, Salakia, verse 17, if adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. And though he pretend to help thee, yet shall he undermine thee. Okay? <laughs> Dropping them, you bomb them, and then you drop packages for them. Okay? Which make the people uh, um, 
you know, so-called appreciate those uh, gestures as far as helping them out, sending food and shit. Okay, but certain countries like in um that Africa, man, certain um countries in Africa, they were uh they was they didn't want to fuck with that shit, man. Okay. It says he would shake his head and clap his hands and whisper much and change his countenance. Okay, because at the end of the day, their goal is to take cut, uh, take control of the resources in the Middle East and also mainly to uh, set up defense systems around Russia, man. Because they know that they're going to eventually have to go to war with Russia. So they're, they're trying to set up defense systems around there with the uh, Turkey, i.e. Turkey. Uh, Syria, they want the uh, resources there also, and 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 threefold, they want that the um the fact that the war is existing is creating lucrative business for the uh the rich elite, man. Okay, so as the scripture said, there should be wars and rumors of wars, man. Okay, and with that being said, we're gonna say call halal to your how about Shimiao Shai, double honest our apostles slash elders, which are GMS, blessings and salutations to you brothers. And you feel a few women out there that are enduring this uh, truth and sincerity. Shalom.